Hello, I'm Jamie with the Volusia County Public Library. In today's video, you will learn how to make a Scandinavian fabric star, no sewing required. You will need the following. Four pieces of fabric. You can do four different ones or two the same as I've done here or whatever combination you'd like. And they're going to be about 12 inches by about three and one fourth inches. You'll also need a pair of scissors, preferably ones that are sharp enough to use on fabric. You're going to need an ironing board and an iron. And optional, you might want a needle and a thread to turn your star into an ornament or to string it into a garland. Let's get started. Take your first piece of fabric. If it has a right side and a wrong side, like my patterned one here, I'm gonna put my right side or the brightly patterned side towards the ironing board, and we're going to start by folding it in half. We're going to then carefully use our iron to make that crease. In our fabric. So you want it to be a fairly nice crease because we're going to use this middle point for our next fold. So you're going to repeat that step with your other three strips and I'll meet you back here when you're done. Now that we have our four pieces folded in half and creased with our iron, we're going to open them back up and you're going to take the long bottom edge and fold it into the center and the top edge and fold it into the center as well and we're going to crease again with our iron. So you're going to take that bottom up to the fold that we just made and crease along your fabric. Watch your fingers. And then we're going to take the top edge and fold that into the center as well. I try to just iron along the edge that I'm creasing instead of the whole fabric because I do still want that center crease in there for the next step. So then you're going to take it and fold it back to that original crease that we made to start with, kind of like you're making bias tape if you're a sewer and familiar with that. So we've taken the top edges and tucked them into the center and then we're refolding it in half and we're going to give it one good final crease with our iron. You're going to repeat this with all four of your strips and I'll meet you back here when you're done. Now it's time to fold. We're going to start by folding each strip almost in half just so there's a little bit of offset at the top. Now we're going to interweave the pieces together. Each strip is going to sandwich the previous one. So because I have two plain and two pattern, I'm going to take a pattern and a plain, and I'm going to take one with the pieces together, the two ends, and I'm going to sandwich it where the fold is there. So I have one facing this way and one facing this way. We're going to end up with a, peach, a piece facing each direction. So I'm going to take my other pattern one now, and because this one's facing this way, I'm going to want this one to face this way, and I'm going to put it inside where my fold is of the red one. I'll tuck it in like that. And then my last red one, since that's going this way, I'm going to have it go the other way, and it's going to go around this first one. So that gets tucked in the crease there. And then I'm going to take the two ends and tuck them in between this loop here. So you can see each piece has another piece where its fold is and then is through another one. So we're going to take the ends and we're going to pull them together 
We want it nice and tight, but not so tight that it's going to bend or crease your fabric. But we want a nice square here. So because I did two and two, you can see I have two of my patterned squares and two of my plain colored squares. So once you've got that nice and tight, no hole in the center there, we're going to go ahead and flip it over. This next weave is kind of similar to what you do for a cardboard box when you're closing up the top and you don't have any tape. So we're going to start by taking just the top piece of fabric and folding it over. We're going to take the next one and fold it over this kind of first square where the red is, but I'm going to tuck it underneath that first piece. I'm going to take the red, whoop, just the first one, and fold it up. I'm going to tuck it underneath here. And then our last is going to go over this red and under this one. So all of our ends are tucked in. And you can give them a little tug again. And everything should hold nice and secure. Another way to check that you've done it right is if you turn it on the side, if your sides kind of fall apart and flop, the two layers flop apart, something's not quite right with your fold. So you can see I can't pull my sides apart here, it's just one square now. So that creates the base of your star here, this front and back squares. So the next thing we need to do is create the point of our squares. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. I kind of like these deeper pockets. So when you look at it, this fabric's coming out the bottom and this fabric's coming out the top. There's still a little pocket here but this one's a little more secure to, stuck, to stick your ends into when we fold. So if I'm looking at these two pieces of fabric here, I'm going to want to make triangles like this. So I'm going to fold so that the tip of the triangle is in the center and it gets bigger as it goes out. I'm going to take this fabric, the extra fabric here, and fold it down, which gives you, if you look at it like this, almost kind of an arrow point to it. And then we're going to fold it over the base of our star. So now we have all this extra fabric here. It's a bit much, so that's where our scissors come in. We're just going to give it a little trim. You still want some leftover fabric. So we still want this little bit of tail because that's what we're going to tuck into the pocket. Get them in there and get your point looking nice. So then I'm going to skip this one because that's the fabric on top. This is also the fabric on top. Here's the fabric coming out of the bottom again. So I'm going to fold. So my point is in the middle fold back on itself to make your arrow point there and then fold onto the square and then if you have a bunch of excess we're going to trim that off to leave yourself just a little tail that we can then tuck into our pocket here. And you can kind of adjust your point if it gets a little out of a whack while you're folding there. So I'm going to skip this next one because that's the fabric coming off the top side. And go to the next one with it off the bottom. Again, we're folding. So the point folding back on itself. Folding over. And trim the tail. Oop, 
them and unfolded. There we go. And now we're ready to tuck into the little pocket here. And you can tuck it into the other pocket that's made with the fabric on the top if you want. I just found this one to be a little more secure when it's underneath there. So I'm going to skip this last one. I would still do this one on this side, but I want to show you. I flip it over, and so all those ones that we skipped because they were on the top, they're now on the bottom. And we're going to do the same thing by folding, folding back on itself, and then folding over onto the, on the square. And this one was one of my short tail ones, so that one I can just go ahead and tuck in. And now because I flipped it over, that has the deep pocket as well. So you kind of get one point of the star on each side coming out the top and the bottom. Okay, so you're going to finish the rest of your points. So remember your small parts are in the middle and then the high points of your triangles on the outside. Or you can do it the other way, it's going to give you a different looking star. See which one you like best. You can now choose to use thread and a needle and you can turn your stars into ornaments to hang or you could thread them all together and make a garland to hang at your house or to give as a gift. You can also vary the size of your rectangles when you start to make bigger or smaller stars. If you're interested in more holiday crafting, you can check out these books and more from your library. And remember, stay crafty, Volusia.